Hi there. Now before I take you through part B of this question, just want to remind you what we did if you didn't see the video for the work solution to part A. What we had and what I drew actually for part A was this diagram which uh, just to go through the question was about a particle P of mass 3 kilograms. It moved from this point A to this point B up the line of greatest slope of a fixed rough plane. And the plane was inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal and the coefficient of friction between P and the plane was 0.4. And we were given that AB was 15 metres and the speed of P at A was 20 metres per second. And in part A we were asked to find the work done against friction as P moves from A to B. And we found out that, that it was 165.76 joules. Now we're being asked to calculate the speed of P at B. And this is worth four marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment then to pause the video and when you come back I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So we've got to find the speed then at B and I'm just going to mark that in as V. And to do this, what I'd want to do is to consider using energy. There are other ways that we could do it, but uh, I'm going to use energy purely because we've got this answer up here. And I think this is really what they wanted us to uh, work with. So I'm just going to put by energy. And so how can we utilize energy? Well, what we've got here, as the particle is projected up the plane AB here, it loses kinetic energy. And that loss in kinetic energy is equivalent to the gain in gravitational potential energy as it gains height here. But because the plane is rough, there's also the work done against friction. So what I'm saying is, is that by energy, the loss in kinetic energy as it travels up the slope is equal to the gain in gravitational potential energy. GPE there for short, and to this we would add the work done, okay, work done against friction. So there's our basic equation. So let's start to fill this in. What would be the loss in kinetic energy? Well, the kinetic energy at B because is going to be smaller than the kinetic energy at A because it's going at a slower speed. So we'll start with the kinetic energy at A which is going to be generally given by the formula half mv squared but uh, that will be half the mass which is 3 kilograms and for V it will be the initial speed here which is 20 so we need to square that half mv squared then. And then being a loss we need to subtract the final kinetic energy. So again it's going to be half the mass of 3 then it's going to be multiplied by V squared. Okay. Now it's going to be equal to the gain in gravitational potential energy. And gravitational potential energy is given by the formula MGH. So it's going to be M which is 3. G I'll just write down there but we'll take it as 9.8. But then it's multiplied by h, that's this height here, vertical height of b above the horizontal. And we need to work that out. So what I'm going to do is we'll just draw a little sketch of the triangle again here. Okay, hope you can see this. And just draw a line across there. This is h that we're trying to find. We know this distance here, it's 15 meters. And we know this angle in here is 20 degrees. So it's just basic trigonometry for a right angle triangle. And that is the sine of 20 degrees equals the opposite side h divided by the hypotenuse 15. So if we multiply both sides by 15 we can see that therefore h equals 15 times the sine of 20 degrees. 
okay? So we'll put that in here for the gain in gravitational potential energy, mgh. So we'll just put that as 15 times the sine of 20 degrees. Now it's plus the work done against friction, and we've got that answer up here. So it's going to be plus 165.76 and so on. So just a question now of cleaning up this equation. If we take this first term here, it comes to 600. Then we've got half of 3, so it's going to be minus 1.5 v squared. And if you take these two terms, taking g as I say to be 9.8, you get 316.590 and so on. So if I add 1.5 v squared to both sides, subtract this term from 600, then rearranging this you get 1.5 v squared equals 600 minus this value and that gives you 283.409 and so on. So dividing both sides by 1.5 v squared turns out to be 188.939 and so on and if you take the square root to both sides v turns out to be 13.745 and so on. And give this to, say, three ceiling figures, it's going to be 13.7. 13.7 meters per second, then, to three significant figures. All right?